So we're just doing a little drive through France. Well, we've just gone to get some croissant from the boulangerie. So I thought I would just, the conversation we were having was quite interesting. So maybe we could just pick up where we left off and carry on the conversation. But it's really to do with people being drawn into taking sides, not understanding that both sides are being funded, played, supported or empowered by the, the very same system. We know that if you, if the media or if the mainstream media didn't want a story to be in the press, it wouldn't be in the press. Well, also that the media is 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 only telling you what they want you to know, or or more importantly, manipulating you. Now, I think there's two parts for me. One is, you know, I'm obviously my my area that I I'm on social media is in the healing area, and and I and I I honour the content where it comes to the not taking sides and actually seeing that we're all have the same blood and that we're humans and that we we need to um, you know we need to heal those very wounds that are within us that means that these things are able to be used to manipulate us essentially because it's it's our our trauma that means they can the media, the, the system, the culture, whatever can use, we have been used to be able to carry this out. And historic feelings of uh, either enmity or connection towards a particular group, nationality, religion. But that, but that is trauma, isn't it? Yeah. Because it's the whole Bible means belonging. Because yeah. if you don't belong, then you are if you were this little tiny being and you were kicked out of your tribe then you would die and 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 of course that that in most in most cases i think in all cases where we we experience some of that trauma when we're younger and then learn ways to make sure that we belong that we are we please yeah. that um yes well we saw that with all the face nappy well, I, I know that I know that from my own mm. on on a personal level, I I have that. I I think we all do. You know, we all want to me belong. Too. It's, yeah, it, yeah, is, yeah. it Does is. it trouble me when I kind of feel like I'm ostracized or I'm upsetting people because I'm saying stuff that they find distasteful? Yeah. Well, I think it, I think it's an instinct thing with that. You know, survival means belonging, and and you know what, what we found is that if you don't didn't belong in the mainstream then then you became part of another community the problem with that is there's still those wounds that you've taken with you and so we we see that we created in other communities don't we it's just kind of gone to a different community it's a bit like people say well you know let's get rid of government and and then let's start another community but the problem is you just take that same, that same trauma, trauma mm. and put it into another community mm. so you've really not changed anything mm. and not only the same trauma but actually you know we're still in this soup you can't you can't really truly escape the soup you know even martin kenny has discovered that you know with his pineal thing is that despite getting their own passports and telling their local constab you know council or whatever that they're 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 you know they're sovereign and they've got their own thing it didn't stop the jackboots from turning up uh, at their door and uh, heavy handing them and uh, I, you know, as far as I know month, more than a month has passed and he's, his partner his wife uh, the, the mother, his second wife the wife with his child is still not with him I think that would well, be right we're speculating aren't we because we have no idea yeah well what I'm not speculating on is yesterday was the 16th of October and uh, kind of sparked this conversation because 16th of October five years ago a whole jackboot brigade of policy officials turned up at uh, Goodhart Way and made accusations uh, about me selling 
plants and barricaded Andrea and Zizi for hours and put me in a box uh, for the day and you know sort of turned our, our lives a little bit upside down and, and that was you know well and I, I, I was I, trying to stay clean and not get involved in selling plants and just doing my own thing quietly well, and what, what, what sparked this conversation is we were speaking about that and, I, and, and Deb asked me how I felt and I expressed that I still have emotion, um, which I think, if I'm honest, was triggered in that experience rather than, um, there was a trauma that was experienced there, but did it trigger something much more... Um, ancient. ancient, perhaps even you know generational, generational collective, mm. in terms of um, being judged uh, about belonging, about a reputation. Um, you know, for me, the one of my wounds, or certainly the mechanism to survive from my wounds, is to please. You know, how does it feel? to disappoint or to to be judged or to be misunderstood um uh, what emotions come up for me one yeah. of them is anger um frustration which is frustration being sadness and anger uh, fear, of fear of ostracism sh shame um you know because after that there was the, there was there was all the the, the neighborhood kind of or well, the judgment and the, and the ripple effect of that and and for me being in this healing space for me it's I, I my I feel my role is to to be with that is to look at that part of me and heal that because I, you know to, to, to some degree there's an element of if I don't heal that if I don't if, if I can't be in my authentic truth from from a place of the scar rather than the wound uh, put it this way I think that's the point the point is self-love the point is self-acceptance the point is um, yeah it is is the need to not necessarily belong and be okay with that yes. but at the same time that we are beings that that enjoy or need or want for connection for, and to be understood and to be understood but can we be okay with being misunderstood by by many can i just be okay with yeah. being in my authentic truth now that's tricky because yeah. there we we tell ourselves a whole lot of lies based on our own unconscious stories but that's being played, the point of this was that's being played, right? That's and, being manipulated. And for us in the truth seeker community is that one of our, you know, one of, for most, maybe not all, the, you know, our, our, our sort of passions is to, is to get others to understand and to be where we're at. And I don't know, <clears throat> I think that part of our healing, part of our growing is to, be in a world that won't, can't, shan't understand necessarily, and, and be, and be okay with that. Um, well, even be compassionate about that because, yeah. because the other people are on their own path and they are, they are going to come to it if they do or if they don't, and be okay with that too. Yeah. You know, I was thinking the other day, can I be okay with there being two truths? same time it doesn't have to be one or the other um, you know that's polarity isn't it that, that there can be both um, because let's take the the current um, side taking thing in you know in the Middle East I'm trying not to use the words um, where where there's you know the one's wrong and the other one's wrong well that, that there's both um, but but that the people that are that are affected or are those that are traumatized and then willing to to 
are, are acting off that trauma because of their anger, hurt, whatever the case may be, deep, deep trauma, but they're being played. I think that's the point, right? Is yeah. that there is, there are these, whatever you want to call them, taking advantage of of Entities that of that trauma, yeah, and, yeah, and, and or, yeah, that's the and important part. Stoking those fires, some of them, some of them decades or centuries old, and some of them more recent. And then they keep prodding the fire, you know, because some of these things are, are burning little fires all the time, but people don't really notice it until all of a sudden a, a, an event occurs, and then all the media attention and so on, and it's really just, wow, they're 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 wanting to yank your chain and our chain. And um, and then we're wanting to tell our friends what we know about what is deception, what is truth, etc., etc., etc. So yeah, I, I guess that we, you know, just wanted to to offer people like a um, some insight on where we're at, thoughts that we have, and um, how. You might use that to uh, help your, you know, your own healing or your own path. Well, I, I, I'd be surprised if there isn't anyone that isn't feeling something at the moment. Whether that be shame, whether that be fear, whether that be anger, mm. and all different parts of parts of their lives um where there may be struggle may there, there may be in survival if you're in survival then i would say that there is definitely trauma there because you know that's what we do is there mm. is emotion there and so we go into the state of survival even if it's just your nervous system mm. and there's this saying in in sort of an area of the truth community break pattern well we have these patterns that um, we are, are unconsciously running from when we were very little um, decisions we made about ourselves in the world um, and it's those patterns and those beliefs and those that trauma that that this very um, system or reality or well in this moment in time illusion. I think this moment in time is giving people the opportunity to to have these things brought to bear. Uh, I was in a church yesterday that has, uh, and I'll put the video up soon, but I was in this church yesterday that has these murals on the wall that were kind of gut churning. They were, they were pretty gruesome, you know, like um, this, uh, this sort of, let's say, um, demonic looking creature stirring a pot in which there are 50 heads, 50 people's heads mm. sticking out of the pot. Another one was churning like a, like look what, like a manual washing machine in which there were 10, 15 people in the washing machine sort of being rinsed. And the, the, you know, Luke made a, the, you know, really good observation in, you know, that that is this sort of story that runs theme that runs through, uh, uh, historic narrative that this place is like a purgatory in which we are here to be rinsed you could take it both ways it's either that we're here to have our souls cleansed through process or that there is um there is some dark force tr trying to boil you uh, like frogs uh, boil us and i and i think i think it could be either and it doesn't really matter because either way you've got to come out of the rinse cycle, you know, whether it's the devil that's trying to, 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 to boil you or, or you are having your soul cleansed. And if you, if you don't have your soul cleansed, then I suspect that you stay in the pot and you keep, you know, getting well, it's, it comes back to the satan, doesn't it? You mm. have to have the oppressor, mm. but the thing yeah. is we can stay, we can stay in the anger. We can mm. stay in the shame. Mm. We can stay in the fear yeah. and really, from my experience and work that I'm doing, which I think is very powerful, is uh, I just want to backtrack for a moment, just so you understand, is that that what happens when we're very little is there's let's forget about big trauma because we can remember big trauma. There's little trauma, 
It can be that you have dropped your juice and you get shouted at. And in that moment, um, your, your mum, which is your world, which is your protection, which is your safety, which is your attachment, um, shouts at you. You are frightened. You feel unsafe. Um, and you make a decision about the world, the world is unsafe, or you make a decision about I'm bad, um, and and with that is a, an emotional experience in your body, and that becomes entangled. And then what happens is that stays there, and you start to live life from I'm bad, and all that emotion that comes with it. That's the lens that you'll see life from, and and there is often an uh, self-abandonment or um, an experience that the outside has abandoned you um, there's obviously nuances and different experiences I'm just using a very basic one and then there's the oscillation uh, either I'm gonna be bad or I am bad or I'm gonna try really hard to be the good girl but what if you're neither hmm. well this is where and we wrap this up, but this is where I think Andrea and me, you know, I'm a, I'm a qualified coach now, but, you know, Andrea might be uh, just the person you need to speak to in terms of helping yourself through this because we can keep staring at all the, you know, all the, the ancient history, the, 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 what's coming in the future. We can keep staring at that, but then we're not in the present and we're not living to our fullest expression and we're staying perhaps even you know from a reincarnation point of view we're staying in the rinse cycle when this this one's finished so if you're inclined to have um some coaching on that then a uh, tractor going in the background if you're inclined to have some coaching on that then contact uh, me and i can put you in touch with andrea or i can uh, offer some coaching you know it's not a it's not an extortionate um, amount for an hour uh, of my time, but it would obviously require uh, more an than exchange. a single hour. Uh, and yeah, an exchange of, of some sort. Um, uh, you know, but uh, but I'm keen to, to help people in that way and be um, some kind of mentor where, where that's appropriate. Uh, and I, Andrea already works with people um, to quite a deep, extent um on on you know addressing the childhood um, um elements of the trauma that keep us trapped in uh, in this cycle and we know that give me the boy till seven or the girl till seven and i'll, I'll give you the the adult we know that this is true and so a lot of why we feel so vexated and needing those people around us to to wake up um, you know, probably harkens back to experiences we had young. So I just want to finish off with, you know, we can stare at the beast and we can be angry with, uh, with the beast for, for the rest of our days, but it kind of keeps us in victim consciousness. And, and I think when we are, when we are the victim, then we are First, we're able to be controlled, mm. and 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 we we stay in this this state of um, that someone's doing something to me. And to be honest, to be a creator, to to be in our fullest power, we we are not victims. Mm. And so it it it's being able to feel all of that. It's mm. being able to see all of that, and and to heal it, to bring it to wholeness, so that you can you can be in your fullest power. Yeah. yeah. Because one of the one of the things that's an uncomfortable truth for truthers, I think, is that um, that we as a collective are some of the most obviously um, aware of what's going on, but also some of the most traumatized by that because it's like you've looked over the fence and you've seen the horrors of what's what's going on over there. Most people I know from before truthers sort of days were are people that have never looked over the fence or un, unable unwilling unprepared to look over the fence and so in their little 
innocent bubble that they've maintained um life is great you know and obviously there's some stuff going on but you know life is great and they don't have to think about too much and so on and it's those people we're trying to get them to look over the fence and um, and and they won't um but we've looked over the fence and the horrors have you know freaked many of us out and we are not there for you know we are traumatized by what we've seen you know and it's just like a child coming across a you know, a damaged, a broken body in a car crash, you know, that's a traumatic thing and you need help to, um, to assuage and to work through the effects of having been traumatized thus. So, okay. so if we go back to what started this conversation, which is the 16th of October, five years ago, um, where we had the experience with authority, um, it, One of many. It it, tra it traumatized me. Well, it reignited a trauma that was already in me. Let's let's say that rather. And I can be angry and and um, want revenge and you know, but really, there it was an opportunity. It was an opportunity for me to see something that was already living in me mm. from very young, um, and with a lot of emotion behind it that needed to be felt. And also realized that that those that carried out that experience um, to not take it personally, that they they are willing to carry that due to their own trauma and programming and programming. Um, and when I can be okay with that, and in fact I can forgive and I can be mm. compassionate, mm. then I can bring that to completion. And I no longer have to have that that experience, and they and and my much younger experience live my life, awesome. and that's freedom. Awesome. So there you go. Let's uh, end this video now, and thanks for listening this far. Um, Trinity for man at gmail.com. Send me an email if you need to.